What's up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh One. And we are back at it again with another episode of For the Greater. Yeah. This time we have yet another amazing question by Atticus X. He asks, Hey guys, thanks for taking my question last week, and we're taking it again. Uh, my question this week is regarding the Eldar. They have become my favorite race in regards to the lore, but there's one thing that I struggle to understand, and that is in regards to their population, size, and most importantly, their motivations. Um, it is said that they are a dying race and are a shadow of the past of glory. Just how big is the remaining Eldar after the Great Fall? I know there are survivors that live on craft worlds, uh, but is there enough Eldar to even populate a planet anymore? Uh, what do the Eldar wish to accomplish? And uh, yeah. All right, so let's tackle this. Um, so basically the Eldar are an interesting breed because when we say that they're close to extinction, um, we're talking about in the galactic right. spectrum. Remember the galaxy itself is enormous. Um, each individual craft world, and there's hundreds of them, um, is the size of a planet. So yes, there is enough Eldar to actually populate a planet. Um, there's there's a lot, but in comparison to the other races, like we talked about last week, Eldar are probably less. There's probably less Eldar than there are Tau. Right? Yeah, I, I it, it's probably right because I mean Tau they have a bunch of craft worlds. Is that what they're called? No, no. Sept world. Sept world. Yeah. yeah. So um, around around the same, but uh, less. Right. Um, and the other thing to keep in mind is that even though there's that many um craft worlds the problem with the dark or with the eldar is that when slanesh was born and she consumed the other gods you should check out our uh, lore video about the gods it explains that slanesh um did something to one of their major gods uh, the goddess of fertility that um caused uh Eldar to have like difficulty breeding so kind of like in Mass Effect where the Krogan um, they got this biological um, thing launched on them like a disease like a disease yeah. yeah that and it made that the, the birth rate very very low of their offspring kind of the same thing with the Eldar it's very hard for the Eldar to actually generate a living being so um i mean even though they do live way 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 past the normal human's life yeah they can't populate enough fast enough to increase their population yeah so in that aspect the tau are going up where they're kind of just plateauing off mm -hmm. and, and then you mentioned the whole thing about like how can they afford to fight and then still maintain their a hold on the galaxy and the answer to that is when, when an eldar dies um, it actually gets its its spirit gets entombed into its uh, little what is it spirit stone? stone. Yeah, spirit stone, and that spirit stone is placed back into the craft world, and then it becomes part of the craft world's um, something circuit, Infi oh, infinity, infinity circuit. circuit. Right. Um, so, in essence, no Eldar is dying; they're just being stored away. Um, there is actually a story that talked about how the Eldar decided to um, attack a planet controlled by, I believe, orcs and Imperial, and, and, and the Imperium. No, the Imperium. And the reason for that was because they were trying to get back the armor worn by one of their, um, not Farseers, but one of like their uh, like champions or whatever. Um, because that stone and that armor uh, can bring back that um, individual. Um, because the, the spirit is held in that stone. So that's how they could afford it. Um, and then at the same time, they're very smart. They're, they're speed oriented. So think about it in the terms of, uh, they're very precise in where they choose to deploy their attacks. And then you asked if they are all, or what's their combined, um, uh, what do you call it? Or what did they say? Uh, what's their population or size, motivation? Motivation. So what's their motivation? They don't have one. I think they're really fractured. After the after Slanesh, well, even before Slanesh, they were flak, fractured <laughs> uh, because you had the main populace, you had the cults, and then you had the um, craft world Eldar and the uh, what's the other one? Like they're like the rangers. Like they go out like. 
Yeah, Exodites. There you go. Yeah, the Exodites. Right. Um, I found my deodorant. Nice. <laughs> uh huh. And so they were fractured already. They didn't have a common purpose because the purpose of a civilization like the Eldar and like the Imperium is to spread themselves out completely, and they had already accomplished that. Right. I mean, that's why the whole sex or no the um the sex cults. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Yeah, that's why they happened, because they didn't have nothing better to do. Um, so, purpose was already fractured. Slanesh was born, killed most of the main Eldar force, or main, or population. And it, the Exodites, the Craftworld Eldar, the Dark Eldar, and the Harlequins were left. And they all had different goals in mind. Well, the Harlequins were kind of built off of the Slanesh yeah. thing, but... But, so, th but that's the thing, like, if, they're, if they do have a unifying um, purpose, they haven't been unified yet um, because you still have the harlequins that dance around um, and they go from craft world to craft world even to dark eldar um like the camera right. place and they do their little dance they do their little plays and that's really what's bringing them together the fact that they share an ancestry but their purpose now is really just survival mm -hmm. um, and that survival kind of like in the walking dead how like you have various groups, but they all fight within each other. They all have the purpose of surviving, but for some reason they keep fighting each other. Right. Um, same thing with the Eldar. They have they have too many. Uh, what is it called? They're being assaulted on so many different pathways. Yeah. That their only choice is to survive. Yep. And that's whatever the craft world dictates it right. should be. Um, but if anything were to unify them, it would be the death or trying to kill Slanesh and the whole laughing god thing. That's why a lot of Eldar from Craft Worlds, Exodites, and Dark Eldar are joining the Harlequins, especially young ones. Right. Because they're drawn to the idea that it's a unification or it's it's nationalism in a way. Because they share like, the common yeah, enemy. Yeah. Of, of Slanesh. Yeah. And instead of like, it's like an Eldar state, I guess right. they can build. Uh, but yeah. And the, that, is that answer in there? Yeah, that's pretty... Do they wish to rebuild their empire? Yeah, because it's survival, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we basically hit all your points. So thank you for a asking yeah. that. Um, I really like those types of questions. They really make you think. Yeah. Uh, but good question, and on to the next. Uh, I'd vote. I have countless Horus Heresy audiobooks on MP3. Send me a private message if you want me to share. Ooh, what are you going to share? <laughs> oh, the MP3s? Yeah. I thought Naked Picks. Oh, well, we'll take those two. <laughs> The Marvel Punisher at 858. Yes, because most of them had the nails installed by them into their brain. But the world eaters. Yeah, who they're kind of evil because they got these nails in them and just makes them be all aggressive and whatnot. But, I mean, that's not them choosing to be evil. That's them being forced. Being forced to be evil. Yep. Right. So, Chaos God Slanesh. PH. The Alpha Legion didn't retreat back to Eye of Terror. They wanted to continue their covert operations against Imperium. Also, it's true that they have the least mutations and have least demons in their ranks comparing to other traitor legions. Right. Uh, we will be putting out a video on the uh, Alpha Legion, so keep up. Well, I think part one is out already. Yeah, I think so. But then we also got one for Alpharius. Primarchs, yeah. yeah. And Omega. Or yep. Is it just one or two? Who knows? Uh, next one up, Tommy Brightweiser. Wouldn't Mortarion make a close, close quarter demon Primarch? As if I'm not mistaken, Nurgle worshippers are known for their hardness and toughness. Yeah, and he's also known for having his sight. Right. So. So yeah, he would. Devastating in close combat, indeed. Yep. Moon Knight, 1985. If the demon Primarchs did come out, I would buy them day one. Fact. Yeah, it, they're gonna go out of stock really quick. So pre-orders, all the way. Uh, Piazzo, I think Logar would be the best if there would be only one because of his ties to Abaddon and his undivided nature. So he was talking about if there was only one Demon Prince released, who would it be? Um, I see your point, since Abaddon would be doing his uh, crusades and whatnot. So uh, maybe. Logar is weak. He <laughs> right. He's not a fighter. No, every fight that he got into, he almost died. Somebody had to always help him. Right. Tarok seventy nine. 
The only way to keep up with the Imperium is by watching TTS. I'm guessing that's text to speech, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Everything else is heresy. Dorn is back. Magnus is back. Russ is fucking up the warp. And the Inquisition. Vulcan has returned. Uh, cool. If only that was true. <laughs> uh, Garrus Valkarian. When is 7th edition Chaos coming out? Never. Uh, actually, there are rumors. There is a new uh, Karn the Betrayer sculpt going to be put out soon. And with that, they're going to bring out new formations and new psychic powers for Chaos. So supplement. Right, like a supplement. Right. But that's going to be the only thing I'm assuming they're getting until 8th edition rolls out. And this guy is tired. <laughs> yes. I went looking for a Pokemon, and it's hot as hell outside. <laughs> and I never found him. You didn't even find any Pokemon no, at all. Because <laughs> there was a Dragonair near my house. Oh, God. Apparently it was... Too far away to be near. Probably in the sky or some shit. <laughs> uh, the the Matt 2610. They should at least cast the Primarchs in metal. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I don't like the metal. Yeah, the metal is hard to work with. It sucks to stick. And then you touch it and the paint rubs off. Right. It, it was a horrible thing. Slime Man. I am curious, guys. Have you announced the giveaway winners yet? I am just asking. I know I won't win. <laughs> Not with that attitude. Uh, no, we have. Well, by the time you see this, yes, we have. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, let's see. Chaos Gods Lanesh again. Can you guys also make 40 facts about some specific Pokemon? Pokemon lore! Yeah, I actually Sounds wanted to do that. Yeah, because there's, there's a lot of stuff. And I think there's the. It would be like a nice balance because we're starting to become. A, or we are a lore channel. We used to do Pokemon videos, so Pokemon lore videos would just make sense. Right. Atticus X says. You guys are the best. Next week I'm going to donate to your Patreon. I can only do 20 bucks a payday, but I hope it helps. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. that helps a whole lot, man. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. We are going to be... Like, we have to get on it um, after next week. Right. Um, especially on Patreon, because we haven't been able to put up like a new like new and improved, this is what's going on with the channel type of video. Right. Um, and we won't have time until next week. Which no. will be this week. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this week in but video the, time. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, thank you. Uh, shut down not 199. Do you think a lot of the problems leading up to the Horus Heresy? I could have, or could have, could have been solved if the Emperor would have took two times out to respond personally to his sons or anything relating to his sons. He had the say-so and, and gave more specific orders and not leaving it up to his sons to deal with each other with no oversight. Sorry for the long question. I love the channel. Thank you for the question. Um, so the question is... Do I ever think about what the what would have happened before the Horus Heresy? So I guess would the, would you think do you think the Emperor could have prevented the Horus Heresy? It, I mean, he was warned by Magnus. I mean, he kind of he has all the psychic powers and like foresight and everything, so he probably knew. He just loved Horus too much to actually do anything. Yeah, I don't think he would have been able to at all to stop the Horus Heresy because if he would have like if. If Horus wouldn't have been corrupted, Angron would have been corrupted, Lorgar would have been corrupted. Ultimately, the whole, or the Emperor's whole idea, I believe, was the same as the Thunder Warriors um, and the, uh, who were the other ones? Well, for right now, the Thunder Warriors. Because the Thunder Warriors were built to destroy, or to, completely take over Terra, and they did. And after they took over Terra, he killed them because he didn't need them anymore. He knew that their savagery in battle would not translate well because they weren't really human. <sighs> Same thing with uh, the Space Marines. Oh, Navigators, that's who they are. Mm -hmm. I, th I have a feeling that, if watch our lore video on the Navigators, but I think the Emperor saw the Navigators as a stepping stone that he would have to crush once he was up for, for far enough. Because they were using the navigators, which were mutants, right, um, to traverse the warp. To traverse the warp, and there, or his whole thing was that um, if he created the webway, there would be no need 
for the navigators anymore. So you get rid of the navigators. You can transport the Imperial Guard much faster now. There's no need for the uh, Space Marines. And he would have gotten rid of um, the Space Marines, or at least brought them down substantially in power. And I think that plan itself is, is just bad. Right, because how's, how's the Emperor going to be able to take on 20 Primarchs plus their legions? Yeah, you don't want to beef up something that you're going to end up betraying later. Right. Unless like, you have a really strong grasp on like how to handle things. And apparently not, since only one Primarch was almost enough to take them down. Yeah, so let, let's let's say that the Webway, Webway project was fulfilled. The, cha the different Space Marine chapters would have been like, yo, now you want to get rid of us? No, thank you. Right. And then an, a civil war, and the civil war would have been corrupted by the Chaos Gods, because the Chaos Gods would have seen that stuff. Right. They would have been like, oh, you guys are fighting against the Emperor, we'll give you powers, and then it would have been like a second heresy. Yeah, but I would love to hear your guys' input on that. Comment down below and tell us about, do you think the Emperor was going to kill the Space Marines? Because it's a such touchy subject. Right. Uh, and those are the questions for this week. Thank you guys so much for asking. Please comment down below on more questions so we can answer next week. That's uh, it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more epic 40k content. As always, you know him as... Gershwan. I am the Sound Alchemist, and we are out of here. <laughs>